I'm here at Hadassah Hospital at Hadassah Ain Karim with Professor Yoram Weiss sitting in his office, the newly appointed Director General of Hadassah Medical Organization. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you very much. Professor Weiss has spent his entire career at Hadassah Medical Center, first as an anesthesiologist and then in clinical care medicine. Good morning, Dr. Weiss. Good morning. How does it feel to be at the, the head of the institution where you have basically lived and breathed for over 31 years? It feels in one way a huge feeling of accomplishment, but on the other hand, it feels a huge weight of responsibility for this amazing institution that I worked in and served for the past 32 years. And uh, I hope to continue and to serve this institution. And I hope that all of us together can really bring Hadassah to the next frontiers of medicine. So you began your career in clinical medicine, and then after you got your master's in business administration, you switched to hospital administration. What made you make that switch? Well, I'll be frank with you. It's not the, uh, it's not the business administration uh, reason that I changed. I did my business administration in order to consult companies because I had a lot of research done and I worked and consulted to a lot of companies. The truth of the matter is that the change was during uh, about three years after I finished my business administration, I was approached by the uh, director general at that time of the institution who asked me to come and assist the administration here to help uh, join the administration and work with them in order to bring Hadassah and to help administer Hadassah. I thought it would be nice if we all got a chance to know the personal side of you. So let's start with the personal. I know you have two daughters and you often talk about the fact that they've grown to be strong, independent women. Tell us a little bit about your family. I'm very proud about them. My wife herself is a director of an international company here in Israel and in Europe. Uh, one of my daughters is finishing industrial engineering at the Tel Aviv University and at the same time is working. And my other youngest daughter is now in the Army in a very interesting job at the Israeli Air Force. So uh, I'm very proud of them and I believe in women. We like those strong independent women. You speak four languages, Hebrew, English, French and German. How did that come about? Well, the German is actually my mother tongue. And this is the worst language I know today because I forgot it. I'm always saying that when I become, when I have dementia, most probably the German will come out. And I learned it actually during one of my calls in the United States when I was very tired, sending German pop up. Uh, the other languages are French, which I spent some time in France during my uh, early childhood. And then I came back and did my first year of medical education in France. So I'm pretty fluent in, uh, in French. And English and Hebrew are because uh, about 50% of my time is in Hebrew and 50% of my time is in English. You did part of your residency at University of Pennsylvania, the alma mater of two of my favorite people, Barbara Silfer and of course my husband, Stuart. So tell us a little bit about your career path. Well, I came to Hadassah actually because I was on my way to the U.S. to do a residency in intensive care in 91. I came to Hadassah during the Gulf War and I stayed. I had a wonderful residency both in anesthesia and intensive care, but at that time intensive care was not recognized here in Israel. So I went over to the University of Pennsylvania to do a fellowship in intensive care, which became an amazing time because I did also my research and I established my research in lung injury and in a certain purine that is lacking during lung injury. And this was an amazing period which actually covered my career over the then past 15 years until I went over to uh, the administration here at Tadasa Mount in Karen. So it was a very important, significant influence of my career. The my time I spent at the University of Pennsylvania, I enjoyed every moment of it. So what's a typical day for you? I know that you had to be convinced to get a driver. So how do you spend that time on, in, on the commute to in Karen every day? Well, as you know, I refused the driver. And the reason I refused the driver because I thought it's not nice to really torture someone because I'm getting up between 4 and 4.30 in the morning. And I'm usually at the hospital between 5 and 5.30 in the morning here at the hospital and sitting in my chair. The reason I'm doing that is because I truly love 
the quiet times coming into the hospital working and preparing things. And also it's the best time to try and find out issues that were during the night in the hospital. I started it when I was running the intensive care unit at Hadassah because I discovered that at that time to talk to the night nurses is very important to discover problems with patients. And now during these times that I'm more an administrator, I think it's important because it gives me the time to think about strategy and to quietly prepare stuff and not just to come into the day when you start all the meetings and you don't have time to think. And for me, thinking is very, very important. I really enjoy it. So let's talk about HMO. What do you hope to accomplish in your first 100 days? Well, I would like in the first 100 days, I would say inside and outside. So outside the hospital, what I would like to accomplish is for us finally to have the final issues with our financial stability with the Israeli government finalized and completed, which we're very close to that. And I hope that by the time that we end up the beginning of the summer, these issues will be done and over with us. Inside there are a few issues. As you know, I'm a big fan, and I think the JCI, the accreditation of ADASA by the uh, Joint Commission is extremely important. And this is one of the key issues that I'm driving here in the hospital and making all the preparations for. And at the same time also making critical and understanding everybody that not only the Joint Commission, but also the issue of service to our patients is extremely important. So these are the major issues when it comes to uh, the organization as a structure. And then finally, I will make all the first 100 days, I will make changes to the administration to make it fit what I foresee for the organization for the future to accomplish a task that we have planned in our strategic meetings during the past eight months. How is HMO different than the government-owned hospitals? Does that affect the balance sheet? And how have you approached that? I think that HMO has actually I see it as a big advantage. And the government hospitals don't have the uh, governing bodies that we have as a non-for-profit organization. The director general basically works without an infrastructure behind him to support him. And I truly see the board of directors and HWZOA as a huge asset to the hospital in order for us to accomplish our things that we would like to accomplish for this hospital. Because when we look at the strategy, when we look at prioritizing things, I think that the thing that we work as a group in order to achieve them, the fact that we have the backing of HWZOA to support the donors is a huge asset that government hospitals don't have. And we looked at the amount of donations, by the way, that are given to Israeli hospitals. And Hadassah is the leader when it comes to donations from foreign countries. So we should be very proud about that. However, to do that, we need to continue and to maintain our financial stability and transparency to our donors. And I'm a big believer in that. So research is very important to our donors, our members, and our supporters. What do you think is the role of research at HMO? The role of research is huge because if you think about excelling, and I believe it about myself, I was a researcher myself and I'm very proud about it. And I think part of the reason that I was so, and I think I was very good at what I did both in anesthesia and intensive care, part of it was because I did the research. I think that research and clinical medicine go hand in hand. If we want to maintain here the best physicians, if we want to compete on the best physicians, if we would like to maintain Hadassah as a leading institution, we must understand that it goes hand in hand with having a top-notch research in this organization. And we must understand that we need to invest in that, both in the education of our physicians and nurses, and both in the infrastructure of the organization. And we need to remember that today, Research and clinical medicine go hand in hand. They require the same infrastructure and they require the same, uh, not only the infrastructure when it comes to buildings, but also the infrastructure when it comes to technology. And that's things that we need to remember. And how do you think we're doing in terms of those things? Well, I think we're doing fine, but I think we need to understand that within the next coming few years, we need to improve the infrastructure and we need to improve our technology, we need to be at the front. And we, need, we don't need to respond to the technology, we need to think how we are positioned at the fore, at the front of the technology. 
And what we've done is we developed a strategy consultation with all the heads of departments and all the heads of divisions in order to map what are the technology changes that are going to come in in the next few coming years in order for us to prepare ourselves in our strategic plans for the next two, three, and five years so that we can be at the forefront of technology and not respond to the technology. And from my point of view, this is extremely important. And I can give an example. I am a true believer that when it comes to cell therapies, okay, I think that stem cells are really at a stage where we're very close to be able to produce organs, livers, kidneys, outside and to transplant them back to patients that need them out of their stem cells. I think we need to think of the infrastructure. So when we think about technology and the infrastructure for research, we need to understand some of this infrastructure will be actually serving our clinical purposes. And it will allow us to be leaders in innovation. It yeah. must. It must. And the way I see it, Hadassah needs, this is really the way I, and I presented the last time when I talked to the board of HWZOA. From my point of view, the hospitals here in Jerusalem, both Mount Scopus and in Karen, the way I see them is a tertiary. Tertiary means the most advanced medicine to our community, but in a way also quaternary. We need to provide upscale, really advanced technology to people that come from all over, from, from Israel, from Europe, even from the United States, in areas that we, need, we think we need to excel. And as I said, I'm a true believer that when it comes to robotics, when it comes to um, personalized medicine, Hadassah must position itself at the front of Israeli and international technology and medicine. Well, we are ready to be your partners in that. And Amen. as we know, Henrietta Zoll said, when you dare to dream, dream big. So we're happy to be part of your dream. Thanks. And congratulations and welcome to your new role. Thanks, and I'm a true believer in that.